Talking objects began life in the British Museum about four or five years ago. Um, they describe it as object-based engagement methodology, which is a posh way of saying using objects from museum collection to encourage people to get interested in history and interested in the story behind the objects and what that story might mean to them and how they can translate that into a creative expression. So that could be drama, dance, music, art, anything you like. I chose the doll because I thought that I could make a new dress for her and some new shoes. Well, the connections basically, I thought she needed some more fashion tips, so I made her a new dress and some sandals. I chose the doll because it's colourful. I drew a flower and put loads of colours on it. I think it's really important. I think it's really important to encourage people to, to feel that the objects in the museum can relate to them and they can have that connection with them. Because I think a lot of people feel that museums possibly aren't for them. That if you can introduce the objects and ask them to respond to them in a way that they feel comfortable, I think that's really important. Um, I think it's worked really well with young people as well. Um, it's a good way to engage them. I think allowing people to express themselves in any, in any way is a good thing. A large clammy hand thumbed the edge of the letter impatiently. Each button across the swelling girth strained. Tensely wiping my brow, I placed the hooker gingerly at his feet. I chose an oil painting of a man smoking a, a hooker, which is an Indian pipe. I chose this because I was interested in the story behind the man and why he was there. I created a monologue um, in the time of the painting. The connection is that the painter is, is from the point of view of the painter. So same time, same place, but different person. Creating people, creating um, the attitude on, on, the person's, on the person's face. I'm, I'm creating it into like a like a picture. He's, he thinks he's um, he's it, but he's a bit sad. I've created the picture, um, his emotion on the pit with different colours. His his memory, his essence, what he's about. He's jealous of people about the, f the friends and that they have. See, he thinks he's. He's got to be the leader, the, the alpha male. I think it represents um, a shift in thinking about objects and the different ways they can be interpreted. So rather just as static things to be put in an exhibition, this is using objects in real time, in real life, and linking them to people and linking them with modern day people and looking at their interpretations of those objects. My name's Claire White, I work at Tully House Museum and Art Gallery. Um, I'm the Community Engagement Officer here and um, I got involved with this project because um, Anna was looking for another group and I'd already worked with the Carlisle Time Travellers and they seemed the perfect group really. They um, seemed really enthusiastic and really keen to be involved so I thought yeah let's, let's give them a go. I chose a pair of Webley Bulldog revolvers that were used in a robbery of Nethery Hall not far from Carlisle in the 1800s. I didn't want to do those things. I was made in Enfield, in a factory made of stone. I wasn't made for evil. I was made to defend the home. 
I was picked up by many hands to do many different things. But no matter what you want me for, there's only one tune a gun sings. I didn't want to do those things. I was taken by a criminal, killer, beast. Loon, who used me for the purpose a whaler has a harpoon. He took me north on a train towards my final end. I was ready in a pocket with five lightning bolts to send. During the robbery, during the escape that lasted several days um, with the crooks trying to get away, they killed several, I think at least four police officers uh, during the escape and it just, the idea that um, these two objects just have metaphorically so much blood on them, it sounds macabre but it's true, that, that I, the idea it just it scares me a little bit but it's fascinating. So in the original project, as I say, it was a week-long workshop, so it was four days really of quite intensive workshopping. So we took our original object, which was a statue called the Three Hoodies that you can see in the Roman gallery downstairs, and used that to inspire the group to come up with their own interpretation of that object's history. So the final piece that they produced was a really lovely mixed media piece with drama, art and music. So for this particular project, we took that methodology and basically shrunk it. Um, so we did the same process, looking at the object, discussing its history and producing a response, but in a couple of hours. And then that response was then filmed at a later date. I chose the sea eagle because I think it's weird. Well, because it, it was the last eagle that got shot, so I chose to draw it getting shot. The sea eagle is over the lake and it's a seagull in the picture over the lake. Well, the object I chose was the dinosaur footprint. Because it was a dinosaur footprint, I thought I would make the feet that might go with it. My drawing could be what the dinosaur looked like when it made a footprint. Uh, well, the CCTV camera is meant to represent that we use uh, CCTV to watch people to make sure that not, nobody's planning anything like to hurt people. Uh, this is meant to represent firewalls because of cyber warfare now and how we, uh, a big threat is hackers today because we store lots of information on computers and the missiles are meant to show like the threat of nuclear war and how we still can battle with weapons today. project has strengthened partnerships that the British Museum has with museums around the country. So instead of being seen as just this massive institution in isolation, it's forging links with smaller museums and also museums kind of in the middle of nowhere like Tully Houses. As a city, Carlisle's really isolated, so by working with the British Museum we're making links um, to other organisations. And I think it's similar to Tully House, it's part of the British Museum's ongoing ethos about the power of the object. It's shifting the picture from a grand narrative down to something smaller, which is easier for people to get their heads around and then can provide a sort of link or segue into the grand narrative. It's a really accessible way of introducing people to history. There's no right or wrong answers and 
it's entirely up to them what they produce. So there's no pressure on people and I think that's a really good way of introducing people to difficult topics, difficult objects and to the museum in general. So I think it's going to form the basis of quite a few workshops that the programming team do in the future.